Victor. So you've decided to read a Bible, huh? Interesting. <laughs> you know you get you knew you had to have known you'd get my attention with this one. Okay. I just wanted to address a few things that you read because you looked like you were kind of stumped a couple times. And you're going to read one chapter, I guess, per video, but not elaborate on it? I don't know. I don't know what you're doing. Um, <laughs> I think you don't realize how long some chapters in the Bible are. <laughs> okay, but you started with Genesis 1-1. You just started right at the beginning, so that keeps it simple. I wanted to suggest, you. I know you. the Bible you have, you said it was a cross-reference Bible. You really need to get a study Bible. I have a study Bible. And King James is also the hardest to understand. Most people do believe that it is the closest, most accurate translation of the original Greek and Hebrew, but it's written kind of in Old English. There's a new King James, by the way, if you like that, if you prefer, prefer that. But I have, well, I have a bunch of them, actually. I have a new international version, which is the one I use the most. I have, actually I have a shelf full of them, but I also have, and this is really handy, four translations in one. So you can open it up and look at each ex scripture side by side. So that if you think that uh, something is contradictory, we read another translation because same it's like the word there's one, one one scripture that always comes to mind when I think of words that are when you translate it it can have multiple meanings. There's a scripture that says, For the Lord has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power and love and a sound mind. That's how the King James reads. And IV reads, The Lord has not given us a spirit of timidity but of power, love, and a sound mind. Fear and timidity. Basically, they are very similar words, but they can take on a different meaning. And I've said before in my, my videos, not very often, I'm usually just goofing off, but <laughs> I have said before, I don't claim to be a biblical scholar. I just have an ability to read it immediately grasp it, understand it, and know how to apply it and live it. So that's where my strength is, it's in the comprehension. I, I can read it and know how to apply it to life. I get all the little subtleties of, like with the parables, with when Jesus gave so many parables and they were confusing the heck out of everybody there at that time. But there, it's for a reason. So I really just wanted to make this video to address you didn't you didn't elaborate and you didn't discuss it you just read the first book of the Bible of Genesis one one and read the first chapter right you didn't read the first book you read the first chapter um, I kind of made some notes where it looked like you got hung up I I could be wrong maybe you didn't have any questions at all but I wanted to address what looked like you had some questions you first got hung up on when it God said he let, he made the trees and, um, and to bear seed after his kind and my translation reads after its kind or after their kind so if you think of it that way it makes a whole lot more sense it's basically saying an apple tree is not going to grow oranges and an orange tree is not going to grow apples so it's each tree or fruit after its kind. And there's a reason that's there because the Bible, it, it's not in chronological order. I actually have one in chronological order, and that's really cool too because that keeps you from going back and forth trying to figure everything out. Um, it's because those scriptures will be mentioned again later on. It will mention fruit at another point or trees. Uh, and they all go together. If you don't put them all together, it's taken out of context. Or if you don't use it the way it was intended in the original ancient Greek and Hebrew, then you, you're not going to get it. The 
trees, though. And animals. You mentioned animals also. Reproducing after their own kind. Okay? So that's all that was. But in the New Testament, it starts talking about trees. A bad tree can't bear good fruit, and a good tree can't bear bad fruit. Well, it's not talking about trees anymore. And it was in the beginning when he created them, but what he's alluding to when you get in the New Testament is people. He's saying bad people are, good, are bad people, and good people are good people. And there's another scripture that says, out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. So not, it's not just heart, but it's, it's your head, too. It's whatever you're feeding your mind, whatever you spend most of your time reading or watching or the intake um, is going to come out your mouth. So it's not saying someone is a bad person because they made a mistake or because they're not perfect. Nobody is perfect. <laughs> it's just the way it is. But you have to kind of put it together with the other scriptures that reference trees and fruit. And it's a, a, in the New Testament it also says the fruit of the Spirit. Um, is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, and temperance. Those are all fruits of the Spirit, meaning if you have Christ in your life, this is the kind of fruit you should bear. You don't, it doesn't happen, though, unless you really spend time with God, and then you will show the fruit of the Spirit. Love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, and temperance. Um, temperance would be holding your temper, you know, you get it. I'm not going to harp on anything because I don't want this to be too long. Uh, time. You, I don't know if you were hung up on it or anything, but you said in this the ending and the end of the first day, beginning of the next day. Well, God's time is completely different from our time. It wasn't a literal day. As far as we know, each of those days could have been a thousand years. And again, I'm not a scholar. I just know how to apply it to life, and there's some things that I do know. I'm sure, I do know I have a couple of subscribers that will, if they see this video, they will get on here and get really deep into this stuff. So you guys knock yourself out. <laughs> you also seem to be really stumped over when God said, let us make man in our image. Now, if you remember, I know you told me when I met you last month, you, you just mentioned it very, very briefly because we didn't talk anything religion at all, but you had mentioned that, uh, I guess, you were you're raised Catholic, I think, or your parents are Catholic or something. So that, let us make man in our image, is a reference to the Trinity. The Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Because you read that uh, darkness was upon the earth and His Spirit was hovering upon the face of the deep. So even at that time, the Holy Spirit, as part of the Trinity, there are three parts of God's personality, but there is one God. Uh, the Holy Spirit was here. The Holy Spirit is what is here amongst us like now. And Jesus was God coming to earth in flesh. But the New Testament says that Jesus never did anything that wasn't what the Father told him to do. So Jesus had a direct, uninterrupted link with God. Like the rest of us, sometimes we're floundering around like, I don't know what I'm supposed to do. You know, I get, I'm reading this and I, I get what it says, but I'm kind of confused. Well, Jesus didn't have that confusion because he was part of God. It was God incarnate here on earth. So, Father, Son, Holy Spirit. So, even from the beginning, there's mention of the Trinity. Right there at the very first book of the Bible, first chapter, let us make man in our image. Um, okay, I think that's all. I didn't really want to get, like, preachy. I just wanted to make a video response for you. I've been wanting to make a video response for somebody anyway, and I just happened to turn on my computer, and there you were reading the Bible. Imagine my shock. <laughs> okay. Talk to you soon. Bye, guys.